What is going on ladies and gentlemen, it is Jake, better known as Star Coding, coming at you with yet another video talking about what else than computer science. Today, we're going to be starting a series talking about JSON web tokens. It's random. Yes, it is random. But I have a keen interest in cybersecurity and software development. And this is a perfect mix of in-between concepts. We have on one hand cybersecurity, and on the other hand, some really complex implementation. I do want to make this a series though, because we're going to be talking about a lot of concepts and there's going to be a lot of steps in the implementation process. Let's not make one big video. Let's split it up into multiples. So with that, let's start talking about what is a JSON web token. So let's give ourselves a situation to kind of think about things for a second when it comes to the internet. When I go to a website, I log in to that website. If it's facebook.com, Instagram, YouTube, it's a website. I log into it to see my, my data, my stuff. That's great. Once I log in, I don't need to log in anymore. Uh, once I log in once, my session is saved from the server or from me and I don't have to log in on every other page I go to. Imagine having to basically uh, log in every single time you want to visit a different Facebook page. That would be crazy. <laughs> that would be inefficient. So that is why this idea of session sessions um, is so useful when it comes to web traffic and the internet. Um, and this right here is you know, kind of a diagram of how it's going to work. So here I am, I'm logged in on, or I'm, I'm on a web browser currently, and I wanna access some web app. Um, for implementation purposes, we will be using a React web app in the future. So we navigate to this web app. What usually happens in the backend, and if you have you know some Wireshark, if you're packet sniffing, you'll find that usually you get redirected from that normal domain, say facebook.com, you go to Facebook, it's going to redirect you to some other server that Facebook owns that is doing their authentication. And on this, you'll, you know, input some, input some, um, your, your username, password, and you get authenticated. And you're like, sweet, let's go. You're finally authenticated and you get a token in return. And once you have this token, your browser will be automatically redirected to the original web app that you wanted to see. Now this, is going to be the main premise for our JSON web token. Now, if you have experience with web dev in the past and have done some web authentication, you might be asking yourself, you know, I've definitely done this with cookies in the past. And yes, that's correct. You can definitely use cookies for, you know, making a session and storing information about the user, you know, their user ID that they're logged in as whatever. Um, but JWTs do that on a new level and especially now the internet is getting big and there's these huge applications that are on the internet these days. Um, these JWT tokens are gonna to be extremely useful for the following reasons. And they're kind of going to push cookies away. They'll never go away, but you know, the, the bigger the application, the more we wanna use a JWT. And why is this? Well, the tokens are gonna to be stored on the client side instead of the server's memory. And this is going to be super important for when it comes to like this whole scalability and authentication across multiple locations. Um, essentially, like if there's more than one party hosting the web application, think about integrations. You know, if I'm logged in to Salesforce and Salesforce uses some backend system um, like Conga, I can log in once. And I'm sorry, I just spat out some software names that. <laughs> it is what it is. Uh, I can log in once and have that authentication tunnel across multiple different th parties, essentially. I think that's kind of what they're talking about here. So multiple different locations, including multiple domains, mobile devices, and that's great. I did have to use this website, wprocket.me, so thank you so much. Um, this was a document kind of just going over... Um, you know, similarities between JSON web tokens and cookies because they do both work with uh, session storage. And one final thing before we jump on in to our fun tokens 
is what is JSON? You know, I'm just gonna assume that people know what it is, but if you don't know, JSON is just a format that is easy for me to read as a person, as a human, and easy for the computer to read as the computer. It's easy for it to parse. Um, for example, if I'm looking at orders, here I can find, I can see easily that there's this date field and there's this customer ID field and there's this customer that has all this stuff. So yada, yada, yada. JSON is, it's perfect. I can read it easily and so can a computer. Um, and you believe it or not, sometimes it's hard for me to read what is easy for the computer. And sometimes what's easy for me to read is hard for the computer to, to see. So this is a format that we can both agree on essentially. It's optimal. So at its highest level, this is what a JSON web token looks like. It is divided into three main parts. There is a header, there is a payload, and there is a signature. The header is going to contain, you know, the metadata of kind of what the JSON token is and like the specifications for its encryption. The payload is going to be the actual, you know, value, the actual user ID, whatever user credentials are inside the payload. And the signature is going to verify that, hey, this in fact is the JSON web token that I gave the user. This is a token that can be used for authentication. If they are using this token, then they are authenticated. Why does a signature mean that, oh, this is, this is good. The signature is what really provides the authenticity to the token. It's how I know that you are who you say you are. And how does this work? I think it can best be explained through, you know, a diagram here. There's been a lot of diagrams, but stick with me. It's great. Um, on the left, we're gonna have a normal request, and this is real data that's just been simplified into this graph. Uh, and there's this malicious request on the right side of the screen. So our normal request, we're you know logging in with the user ID of 500. So my user ID is 500, I'm logging in, and I'm using this HMAC function, which is like the message authentication code, uh, SHA-256, this is just a hashing function that uses a secret key on the server. So this, this will be universal, the secret key is gonna be on the same over here, so it'll be, these will be the same. And when this packet gets, you know, passed in, they both get passed in together and bam, we get an output. And this output is pretty much mandatory. It has to be the same when the message comes back. So when, you know, I'm talking to the server and the server's talking to me, we better have the same signature at the end of the day or else we know that something is messed up. For example, if I wanted to change my user ID from 500 to 501, I would send it, I would send my request, it would get uh, hashed with the key of the server, and once this is computed, bang, it's gonna be completely different. I mean, look at the difference of this, I've just one value difference, 501 to 500, 500 to 501, that's a big difference, so signing this process of signing the JSON token will ensure that no one has tampered with it and that the person that says who they are is who they are. So to wrap up the video, I guess what we can do is a quick demo of how this is going to work in the wild. So right here I have opened up VS Code. We have you know a server that is using you know Express uh, React essentially to run. I think it's actually just Node.js. It's using Node.js to run on port 8080. And this is just a simple login service. So if I go to Postman and make a post request to log in, you know, we're writing to the, to the function here. Um, we can go to the body and specify a name. We'll just go, you know, Jake, no problem. We can send this guy and we get a response back down here. And we can notice that there are three uh, main tokens here. We have an access token, a refresh token, and authentication. Right now, we're only worried about the access token, although in later videos, we'll explain what the other ones are and what they do. Um, and this bearer is kind of just some documentation, really. Uh, if we look at it, any party in possession of a bearer token, bearer can use it to get access 
So this is just signifying that this is a bearer token. Uh, it can be, you know, a different type. It could be general. It could be whatever you want it to be. But for simplicity's sake across, you know, all these different companies and all these different, you know, third-party applications, we say bearer. It's the common lingo that we're like, okay, man, like you're the bearer. Cool. Um, anyhow, we take we can take this, and I know it looks scary. It looks like, what the heck does this mean? But it's actually the three individual parts that we were talking about earlier. And if we open up, I believe it is this, you know, jwt.io. We can go in here and paste the output. And notice how for the header we have some stuff, but most importantly for the payload, we can see that it's Jake with a timestamp of, you know, this. That means that it was basically created at whatever time that is, uh, February 2nd. Um, sweet. And then the, the signing bit down here. So that is your JSON web token from, you know, the high level overview. In the coming videos, be prepared to do some implementation um, and discover more about what JSON tokens really are. Thank you.